There is an often option that we offer patients. It's called the direct neck lift. So sometimes patients will come into our office and they're not worried about the jowls or the jawline or the cheeks. They just have this extra tissue here centrally in the neck and they want to do something about it. So we offer and talk to them about the direct neck lift. It's a great option for that turkey gobbler that some people call it that lays down and just hangs down. This is a procedure that seems to be a little bit more common in men and I'll tell you why in a second. It's great for patients who have had excessive weight loss. So we also see a lot of patients who've had gastric bypass surgery or things like that. They've lost 150 pounds plus sometimes and they just have extra redundant skin um, and it's just really lax and usually this is when they're older and so it's not going to rebound. What can we do with this skin? Well, this is an option. The one downside with this that I tell patients is there is a midline incision. So we actually just cut this out and there's a scar down the neck. Now it heals up very nicely. It's, a, it's an in-office procedure, minimum downtime. Um, it's under local anesthetic. Here's a couple of examples of gentlemen that we've done who have, who have had this. They, you know, sometimes the gentleman will come and they'll tell me, you know, wearing a shirt and collar and a tie is really a problem. This hangs over their shirt and tie. It, it gets too tight on them. They want to do something about it. Um, it. This is not to say that we haven't done it on females because we have. Um, but it seems to be that men are a little bit more comfortable with a potential scar here. Now this heals up really well. We've talked a little bit about skin care. Um, we're not going to get into a lot of details about it, but there are some things as far as the superficial facial rejuvenation. Skin care products are a must as far as I'm concerned. You should have some sort of daily regimen and one number one thing is sun protection should be the number one thing that's a part of anybody's skin care regimen. But chemical pills like Dr. Thompson uh, talked about, laser resurfacing, we can get into the details. I won't get into them now, but certainly if you have questions, I'd be happy to answer them about the differences between a CO2 laser and the Venus Viva machine. Microneedling that you hear about both with and without PRP. With PRP is what you've probably heard about, the vampire facial. That's what that is. Um, hydrofacial and dermosweep are uh, devices that we have in our offices that are fantastic for cleaning the skin, infusing the skin with products to help keep them hydrated, help keep them healthy looking. Um, one of my favorite things, and I actually have a hydrofacial once a month. I'll just do it over my lunch break, I'll have one of the girls do my hydrofacial, and I feel clean and it feels great and it helps my skin. I'll just do it over lunch break and then I'll go on working, so there's obviously no downtime associated with it, but it's very useful. A couple examples, here's a patient that had a couple of IPL treatments as well as the institution of a skin care regimen using skin suitable products that we carry. You can see some of the differences in the coloration of the skin as well as those spots that we really hit. Here's a patient with three chemical pills as well as the institution of a skin suitical skin regimen that was very effective for her, um, some of the flare-ups that she was getting. I think we might have shown this one earlier as far as the CO2 laser resurfacing and the changes that you can get from that. I'm going to mention this here because this is um, maybe not the topic for this audience per se. Um, maybe you have significant others that might this might per, uh, perceive to or, or be, be more of a part of their lives. However, it is certainly part of our practice. Uh, it's been a part of the practice for a long time. Dr. Thompson's been doing it for a long time. And it is a, a big part of what we do here as far as transplanting hair, trying to help rejuvenate the hairline, um, even eyebrows and other areas that can be transplanted for uh, better aesthetics. All right, we've covered a lot tonight and there's some things that we haven't covered. So we didn't get into the details with Botox and fillers. Botox is the number one office procedure that we do. We're in the top like 3% in the country as far as practices with Botox. We do plenty of it. There's a lot of great things that you can do with Botox. We're not going to get into the details. Fillers right there with it. A lot of volumization and things that you can do with fillers and used in the right way, they can make a nice difference or they can make a nice additive um, kind of adjunctive procedure to possible surgical procedures. We're not getting into rhinoplasty tonight. It really doesn't fall under the, li the, the lines of facial rejuvenation, but it's a big part of our practice, both in the functional sides as well as the cosmetic side and often a combination of the two, helping people breathe better as well as um, improve the look of their nose. 
Otoplasty is a procedure, ear pinning you might have heard of before. We do a lot of that. Young, middle-aged, adults, older age, plenty of people that are looking for changes in their ear. Um, that's one of, you know, I think Scott and I both see eye to eye with the fact that one of the best things about our practice and what we do is, is the three-dimensional anatomy of the face is second to none. The nose, the ear, the complications and, and the intricacies that are involved. The medical mission trip that he mentioned earlier that we met on and the ones that he continues to do and that I've done are usually involved with kids who have microtia. So those are kids who are, are born without an ear. Okay, and it's reconstructing their ear, utilizing their rib cartilage. And so ear surgery is something we're very comfortable with and we like to do, enjoy doing it. Mohs facial reconstruction, so if you see a dermatologist and you're getting skin cancers removed, we're often the ones putting it back together. If they don't do it themselves, they'll refer to us. We have a number of uh, dermatologists that we work with from Ogden all the way down to Southern Utah County who refer patients to us. We see a lot of these patients to help reconstruction. And that's, that's one of the more enjoyable aspects of our practice and the things that we get to do. We have a lot of fulfillment by helping these patients um, feel better about themselves and doing the best thing we can to help fill in the hole, essentially, that's been created. And then facial reanimation, or facial reanimation surgery. <clears throat> so this is one of the specialties that I picked up throughout my training, especially back in Boston, which is like the premier facial reanimation center in the country. So it's, it has to do with patients with facial paralysis and dealing with patients with paralysis and doing things to help maximize their movement, their balance, their symmetry, and so forth. So again, these are things we're not really talking about. Happy to talk with anybody about that if you have questions about that and so forth.